Welcome back, my fellow mobile gamer. My name is Nimblethor, and today in my mobile gaming quest, where I look for the very best mobile games to share with you guys, we're gonna have a look at a card crawling RPG with roguelike elements called Look Your Loot. And we start off here by selecting the hero we wanna play as. Now, there are quite a few to unlock, and each of these have a unique trait to them. For example, we'll go with the Knight for now, which is the one I played with the most. And this Knight's special ability is that if an enemy card is weaker than the knight's shield, then the shield will only lose one durability. And you'll see soon enough what that means. Now, once we've played a few rounds with this character, we're gonna go back out here and I will unlock one of the newer heroes. So be sure to stick around for that. I personally am rather curious to see how we'll do with one of the other ones because I've only really played with the knight so far. So now here we're gonna select the game mode. And as you can see, there are actually quite a few different game modes. I'm gonna go with the three times three grid game mode, which I think is pretty much this game's standard mode. At least that's one we play through in the tutorial of this game. So here we are. Our hero is in the middle of this 3x3 grid. We have 10 HP, which you can see in the top right corner of our hero's card. Now, whenever we attack an opponent, we take damage equal to the number in the top right corner of that opponent's card. So for example, if we attack the... I think it's a cat, right? The cat just above us. We are gonna lose 4 HP, so we're down to 6 out of 10 HP. And if we have less HP than the number in the top right corner of the opponent, by the way, and we still attack it, well, we shouldn't do that because then we're gonna die, basically. Now, if you've played Card Thief, you'll notice that this gameplay is very familiar. And indeed, the indie developer behind this game, behind Look Your Loot, has said that he has been very heavily inspired by Card Thief. Now, the cool thing about Look Your Loot, though, is that it's completely free to play. So that means we can basically play through all of this game's game modes for absolutely free. And it's not like the two games are exactly the same either. They're not just a copy of each other. For example, the goal in Card Thief is to get through just 35 cards with as much gold as possible. Whereas here in Look Your Loot in the game mode that we're playing right now, our goal is simply to get as far as we can with a boss battle waiting for us after every 10 cards. And that boss is the one you can see just to the left of us right now. So let's try to get this shield up here. Let's recover some HP. We have 10 out of 10 HP, so we should be able to defeat the boss now, also because we've got a shield. And that actually levels us up. So this is one of the other big differences between these two games. We get to pick one of two uh, random upgrades. And these are temporary upgrades, of course. We're gonna lose them when we die. So we can increase a chance to find a fireball card or we can get poison resistance 20%. So I wanna go for increasing the chance to find a fireball card because the fireball cards are really awesome. They attack all enemies around us or all cards around us. So let's, for example, you know what, actually, I don't wanna use that right now because I do wanna get the shield. And I think with the fireball exploding, we're gonna probably destroy the shield. But we don't really have any other great options though because we only have three HP, so I guess I'm just gonna go for it. Let's see what happens. Fortunately, it did not destroy the loot box over here on the right side, which we got from defeating the boss. And now actually we can pick up a revive potion. That's pretty cool. So I guess this means that if we die now, we are gonna, you know, basically get another life. That's awesome, we're gonna try that out. So let's attack this one. And there we go, it used our potion. So I guess we got another life here. Now, I was kinda expecting that we would get full HP, <laughs> which we didn't. Um, that's a bit unfortunate. I do still think we might be able to make it to the next boss though if we play careful enough we've got a key here we can trigger the fireball as well at least we can pick up some gold so even if we die now you know at least we will have gotten something now this is interesting though this boss here will continue attacking us until we kill it so we have very limited time to get to that boss and deal with it i want to pick up these projectiles here and i'm going to use those because those are items that end up in our inventory over here or in our backpack so let's use these projectiles which should attack all enemies for a small amount of damage we're still taking damage though because that was our turn so what are we gonna go for now what, admittedly, this is gonna be pretty difficult, right? I think we're gonna go for the shield dash. What is it that one does? We can hold down on any of these cards, by the way, to see what it is they do. This one, uh, let's see. The hero makes a sudden attack in the chosen direction to the edge of the table. Having received no damage, instead he makes damage equal to the power of the shield taken. If there's no shield, the attack will bring no damage to monsters. Sometimes, okay, so, hmm. I guess we can't really use that one for anything meaningful right now. What about these knives here, though? Sometimes the hero does not have enough health for direct damage, and this is exactly when this sharp staff comes to the rescue. Is this a staff or is it a knife? Anyway, the damage depends on the initial power of the character and increases alongside with the upgrade of the character. Hmm. Okay, so I think we're gonna go down here first and we're gonna try using... Oh, wait, actually, there's a shield here. Perfect, I didn't see this. So, shield and recover some HP, and now I think we're able to deal with the boss. Yes, there we go. We leveled up to level three, and now we can pick another upgrade. This time we can choose between restoring full health, 
Uh, we have five out of 12 health right now, which is very conveniently indicated in the bottom of that upgrade, actually. That's pretty cool, UI and UX wise. Uh, we can also get maximum health points plus one. I think I'm gonna go for just recovering full HP now, though. Oh, there was a potion right next to us, so I guess we, hmm, maybe we shouldn't have gone for that. But anyway, we're gonna go up to the loot box up here and hope that it's gonna give us something awesome. Oh, well, there was a bomb, so now we have to move away from this bomb. Uh, as quickly as we can. Oh, well, we have nine additional turns to get away from it before it explodes. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, here we go. So as long as we stay away from it, it's gonna be fine. You know, uh, we can still move around. We can still attack other cards. We just can't really move up there right now. Six more turns until it goes boom. All right, so this is what we're gonna... No, what? What? I thought we'd recover HP by, by taking that potion. But we died instead. Oh, well, that was kind of unfortunate, but it does allow us to go back, though, and unlock that new hero that I promised to show you guys. So, we are gonna unlock this one. I, I read through all of these descriptions already. This Dark Druid sounds really awesome. So, what this one can do is that it regenerates health every time we don't lose a battle or we don't go into a battle. So, I think the way this works is that on every turn where we don't lose HP, we will actually recover HP. And that should be really beneficial, I think. Now, for this character, let's go into one of the other game modes. Let's pick the 54 card cards three times free grid. Now, in the other game mode we played, uh, it was basically endless. So as long as we didn't die, we would have been able to continue on forever. And as we get better and better items, you know, we get better and better heroes, that should become a whole lot easier. Whereas here in this 54 cards game mode, this is a bit more like you see it in Card Thief, where we just have to get through 54 cards. And once we've done that, we will have won, and you know, we will hopefully have gotten a lot of gold. And if we already have the characters we want, and we don't really need the gold anymore, I guess we can always try to beat our own high score. Now, we can use gold, by the way, to actually buy temporary or one-time use upgrades. I kind of skipped that before, but there are certain items that you can buy before you go into one of these levels, and so that means that there's always going to be some use of gold, at least. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed when we started playing with this druid character, but it only started out with 8 out of 12 HP in total, which is kind of interesting as well, so you do have a bit of a disadvantage but you do have 12 HP in total though, which is more than the Knight, which only had 10. So it's just that you start out with 8, so you gotta make some turns and do some turns where you don't take any damage, and then you're gonna get up to, to 12 HP. This is a really interesting character. I think this is the character to go with initially if you wanna play with one, because then this one should allow you to get a bit further into the 3x3 three three grid game mode, which is gonna earn you a lot of gold, and that way you can then use that gold to unlock the other heroes. Now, in terms of monetization of this game, there are a few heroes that can only be unlocked through premium currency, and the game also shows us a few advertisements uh, when we die from time to time, but these ads can be removed through a simple, single $2 in-app purchase, so I'm actually really happy about this uh, monetization model. And as you guys have seen already, we do get a ton of content for free in this game. Apart from the game mode we already talked about, each hero also has a few trials that they can go through, which is another type of mini game modes. And then back in the home menu, we've also got 38 puzzles to play through, which act as a good introduction to the game. So I think this is a decent alternative to Card Thief, actually, if you want something slightly different, but you enjoy the overall style of the gameplay. But I could be wrong, of course, so let me know what you think about this game in the comments down below low, and let's now head into the mobile gaming news of the day instead, which is that Apple's mobile game subscription service, Apple Arcade, is expected to reach 12 million subscribers by the end of this year already. That's according to one researcher, at least, who is very optimistic about this service. Personally, I think the mobile game subscription services like Apple Arcade will have a hard time convincing developers to continue developing games for their platforms as soon as they stop, well, basically paying for the development, which is what Apple has done so far. And the reason why I say that is that this subscription model it just doesn't seem really viable for any developer out there when they know that they could have earned so much more money if they had gone the free-to-play route, or maybe with a bit of luck, even had released a premium game, but just as a standalone game instead of through one of these subscription services where the revenue is shared between hundreds of different developers. But hey, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Interesting times ahead, no matter what. But let me know what you think about these mobile game subscription services in the comments. And then, you know, let's end it on that note for today. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've had a great time here today, and until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.